What's up guys, my name is Michael Lynn. Welcome to my YouTube channel. So we're on chapter five, which is functions. A function is basically a sub program that acts on data and returns a value. Every program starts main function is called this main function. It's always called no matter what functions that are not part of an object are called global functions. And we'll go over that later. Functions have return values, parameters, Parameters are also called arguments. Functions, they can receive values and return values. They don't have to. A function can do the same amount of work and then return the value as a result from that work. So in here, my function, it has no parameters. The parameters are the data that's in these parentheses. So if I have like int param1, int is an integer, by the way, int param2, these are parameters. There's data that you pass into this function. That's what they are but you don't have to include them pretty much in a function. Basically, whenever you go to a function, it would just jump into that line of code and then it would do it. And I think we have, we already went over this. Basically, to use a function, you have to declare and define the function. So you could tell the compiler the name, the return type, and the parameters. To declare, you need to define a prototype. So normally before this whole time, we made our functions above main. So let's say I have param one, uh, let's just say param two, okay. So before we had all, all our functions before main, right? So it was void my func. Thing is, there are three ways to declare a function. You use your program into a file and then use the hashtag include. So you put your function into a program, into another file and use hashtag include. You could write the prototype into the file into which your function is used, or you could define the function before it is called by another one. When you do it, the definition acts as its own prototype. So basically the whole time we've been declaring our functions above main so that we could call it in main. That way it knows what function to call because it's already, it goes line by line and it already sees this function above main. So when I do fu my function, it there's no, there's no compile error. Well, okay, I'm gonna, let's say I create two integers, uh, two and three, and let's say I just pass X and Y. It knows where this function is because it's a before main. But the problem about this is that it's not a good programming practice to do this. There's a few reasons why. One, if like you require functions in like this exact order where it's always above the main function, or like you're calling another function, let's say my function two, let's say you have my void my function two, and let's say it doesn't have anything, right? If I wanna call this function, it's not gonna know where it, my function two is. When you run it, it's not gonna know where it is. See, there are errors. If you do your functions like this, you have to put your functions before each other whenever you want to call it see now here's a problem if, if function 2 if my function calls function 2 right but I want to call function 1 in function 2 then you can't put this function in front of the other one and put this function in front of the other one because you can't just call it both of these so there has to be a better way to call these functions instead of just declaring them before them and then call them afterwards so there's a thing called function prototypes and function prototypes are a very good and powerful debugging tool it basically it tells the compiler what your function name is and what the return type is and what the parameters are so if a prototype declares that your function takes a particular set of parameters and doesn't match it the compiler can flag you if it tells that oh your function was like not the right prototype if you do it so here's how you prototype it. You basically just like, let's say I didn't want, okay, let's go back to this example. Let's say I wanted function two to call function one, right? Let's say I pass in two and three, right? It doesn't know where this function is, right? Cause yeah, so there's errors. So a way to do this is that before you even call all your functions, you write the exact function name above for all your functions, you write, you copy, the return type, the function name, and its parameters. Now, when you call it, it would it would just print it. It's fine, because it knows where it is. See? Well, I didn't really do anything in all these functions, so yeah. Well, it, it works now, basically. This is the good thing about functions. That's how you prototype. By the way, you don't have to include the actual name in the prototypes. So I could actually delete these two parameters and it would still be able to find it's my function too. Problem is, is that it's not good for readability. By the way, all your parameters are local scope. So let's say I have param one and param two, right? After when I call this, I don't have access to param one, see, in main. After when the function calls over, like after when I called 
my function, I don't have access to param one and two because it's it's a, it's only local scope. So it is like completely gone right after the function call. It gets discarded. Your parameters get discarded after your function call. There's there's also something called global variables. Now they're actually avoided, but global variables are basically variables that you can associate outside of your function. So let's say like I, I pass in like total score. Let's say I'm making a game. I want the total score, right? And then every time I'm like scoring something, I add total score. Then another function, subtract score. If, if I'm doing this, I'm basically forced to pass in the total score over and over again. Like even like, I don't know, get score. I'm forced to pass in this stupid score over and over again. But I could avoid this by having something called a global variable. In this case, everyone knows, all your functions know what your variable is. You create a, something called a global variable. Let's say I make it a score 100. Now all your functions know what this global variable is and that it's fine. Now this is actually not good programming practice to use like global variables all the time because you don't know when it gets modified in every single function. Like if I just have like a thousand global variables, I don't know, I can't keep track when it like gets modified. That's why a lot of it is like avoided. Global variables exist outside of the function, have global scope and are available by any function of the program. So that's a good thing about global variables. But let's say you have a local variable with the same name as a global variable. Let's say in get score, I create something called total score and I set it to zero and I return total score. What do you think my score will be? Well, let's just try it out. Let's just see what happens. Would it return zero? Because I redefined the score in this function. Or would it return 100? Because 100 is a global variable. Well, let's just see what happens. I'm gonna print out the score. Zero. Basically, whenever you have the same name as a global variable, it just, it doesn't overwrite your total score. It actually doesn't overwrite this. And it, it just refers to the local variable total score. So I, I still have access to the total score variable. Basically what happened was is that it created two variables, one with the local variable called with the same name called total score, which I set to zero. And then there's another one that has a total score of 100. So if you create a local variable with the same name as your global variable, it's just gonna create a separate variable and then it's gonna it's gonna refer to that value. This total score, when I return total score, it doesn't refer to the global variable. It returns a local variable, local variable one, total score. So just just FYI, just don't don't have the same variable names. It would just prevent all this confusing thing. So yeah, just don't don't do this. Don't have the same variable name as your global variable. Like create a local variable that has a same name as a global variable. It's not good programming practice. Oh, default parameters. So let's say I have, let's say I want to subtract a value. Okay, I'm going to call subtract score. Okay, if I want to have a value that I want it to pass in, but I don't want to explicitly pass it in, I can make this something called a default value. That way, like, I don't have to pass in 10. Like if I don't know what I'm passing in, I'm just gonna say, okay, no matter what, if I don't tell them how much I'm decreasing the score by, it's it's just gonna automatically be 10, all right? That's what, that's what default parameters. Basically, if you don't know what you wanna pass, you could create a default parameter right here, and then you would just say, okay, no matter what, it's just gonna pass in 10 or 11 or whatever. We're just gonna say this has a default value, and it's gonna pass in 10 or 11. All right, uh, here's F. So I'm gonna print out the total score before, which is 100, and then I'm gonna subtract the score. So now it should have the value 10, uh, 90. It should have the value 90. Yeah, 100, and then after I subtract it, I have a value 90. Basically, a default parameter tells the compiler, okay, if I'm not passing in any value into the function, it's just gonna assume the parameter, it's gonna give it the value 10. It's just gonna give the parameter a value 10 when you don't pass in anything. But if I pass in something like 100, right? It's actually, it's gonna take in the value 100 and this is gonna be zero. So it's gonna do 100 minus 100, which is zero. That's what 
default parameters. But there is a catch though. If any of the parameters do not have a default value, then the previous parameter can't have a default value. So <clears throat> if I do like, you can assign a default value to two only if you assign a default value to three. You can assign a default value to one only if you assign a value to two and three. So if you if I want to assign a value, a default value to, to, of two, parameter of two, I, I could only assign it a default value to two if I assign it to three because there's no way you could call the function if you don't do it like that. So let's say I call it 100. If I want to have the default value of four, right? Then I have to leave this empty. But if, if I want the default value of four, I also have to include a number, like if I want a default value of pr parameter two, right? But then I want parameter three to have 60. I can't do that. The compiler, you, you, you just can't do that, right? So that's why if you have a default value of parameter for the second parameter, you also need a default value for the third parameter. So now when I call this, I could just not include values for parameter two and three. I just pass in 100 for parameter one. So that's the thing about default values. The previous, like if I want a default value of of two right here, right? And I don't include default values for two and three, then the co you, the compiler can't do that. Like the ones afterwards has to have a default value. If I want a default value for parameter one, right? Then how can I call this function with values for two and three? You see that? Do you, do you know what I'm saying? Like I have to include a value here. So that's why they don't allow you to just have default values for param one. If you have a default value for param one, you need one for two and three. If you have a default value of param two, you need one for three. And if you just have a default value for three, then that's fine. But here, it doesn't know what you're doing here, like for what you're passing in here. Like if you just want the default value of two, right? And if, if I do that, it doesn't know what it's passing in for three then. Do, do you know what I'm saying? I hope you guys understand. Because param1 has the default value of 2, right? So if I just leave it empty, then it doesn't, it expects a value for it. And if I just take it out, then it expect it's going to assume that 50 is going to param1 and then 60 goes to param2. Then I need a value for 3. So if you want a default value for 1, param1, you need to include 1 for 2 and 3. So that's the thing about default values. So now if they all have default values, then I could do this. So, oh, okay, 50 will have the param one. I'm gonna pass 50 into param one. I'll pass 60 into param two. And then it's gonna have a default value of four for three. Param three. I think it would make sense if like I did this way, param two. So yeah. The thing about default value, like you can't have nothing in between. Like I can't have param one have one, the no default values for three, because I don't know what to pass in for one. If I want the default value of one, like I, I could pass in like 60, sure. Or like a hundred and not use the default value. But if I want to use the default value, the default value of one, then I need to pass in something. I need an expression. If I just take away this comma and just expression completely, it's going to assume 50 goes to param one and then 60 goes to param two, but then I don't have a value for three. So that's why it, you can't have, if you have a default value for one, you need a f value for two and three. If you have a default value of two, of just two, you need a value for three. Otherwise you get an error. And if you, but it's fine just to have a default value of three. Cause then it would, it knows 50 goes to 60. Uh, param one is 50, param two is 60, param three is nothing, it's three. It's a default value. So function overloading in C++, you could have the same name of the function, but they have to have different parameters. If you have a function exactly the same call, it's not going to know what it's calling. Like, let's say I say print function two function one. Let's say if, if they have the same name, you're going to have an error. Why? Because you redefine the function twice for function overloading. They have to have, they could be the same name. But they have to have different parameters. It has to be like that. 
then it would know what function it is. Then you could pass in whatever value you want it to be. Function one, 50 and 60, and it would know. Or you, or okay, that's just a bad example. Like that, it would just know. See, function two, it would just know like which one it is. They have to have different parameters. That's the only thing that matters. Like this could be a change to an integer. It would still be fine. As long as it has different parameters. It's same name and different parameters. See? It would be fine. Wait, uh, that's because I didn't return an integer. Yeah. Um, here, I'll return a uh, return zero. See? As long as like it has the same same name but different parameters. The return type doesn't matter. That's for function overloading. Alright. That's pretty much it for functions. Anyway, rate, comment, subscribe, and check you guys later. Peace.